Hello then, Soren and YouTube. I'm uh, Fishfan420, and this is my take on the automated color applicator filler that Soren's been working on for a couple streams. Um, Soren, if you're watching, I've seen you working on this, and uh, I kind of really like the idea, but I noticed you were struggling with it a lot, um, mostly because of shortcomings of certain mods and inability to report data to certain other things which isn't really anybody's fault, it's just how it works. Um, so this is a completely self-contained way to fill uh, a color applicator. Um, every time, all the time, reliably. Um, it's very complex, as you can see, it's pretty big, but this kind of covers every part except power generation, which you would handle separately. Um, so let's get into it a little bit and explain how it works. So first off, this right here is the main storage for the paint, the flow, the dye, everything that you need to make the paintballs and the snowballs and everything. So what we have here is we have a drive. This drive has three storage cells in it. This first cell is partitioned for all of the materials like paint and snowballs. So only stuff that stuff can go on here. The next drive, if I'm not mistaken, is partitioned for the flowers and the mortar and pestle randomly. Um, for all the different flowers to make up the dyes. And then I believe the last one is the actual dyes and the petals. Yeah, that's what that is, to keep all those on one cell. So, we have the drive. That drive is set to a priority 10. We have dual controller set up, and we have our little I.O. port and a cell workbench. And then I have a little shelf here with view cells on it. And I made view cells to try to make this a little bit easier. So we, you know, we can look at the flowers. Uh, let's just take all these out to make it a little simpler. So we got flowers, petals, powders, and paints. You can look at your crafting terminal or viewing terminal, and you got your flowers, nice and easy. Or petals, also nice and easy. Powders and your paints. Kind of just to make it easier. I usually leave it on paints. And I drop one of these cells. Uh, let's stick this back here, there, and there. Okay, so that is what handles all the storage of that stuff. The whole filling of the color applicator is a subnet, and that is controlled partially by this toggle bus. Well, mostly all by this toggle bus. Um, if you look on the back side here, this is where we handle all the creation of the paintballs and the snowballs and everything like that. So let's cover this part first, and then we'll handle the, the actual filling. So to get the dyes, it's a Batania setup, because the Batania flowers um, are the easiest way to get all 16 colors without having to go crazy with dyes and squid farms to make black and all that kind of stuff. So very right now I'm using creative Batania mana pools, so you, you know, have to deal with mana generation, but obviously people who work with dyer, I'm sure wouldn't really have that much of an issue with that, or you can figure it out yourself for anybody else. Um, Either way, we have a redstone mana spreader here with a timer. Timer is set to four and a half seconds. That pulses the redstone mana spreader, which shoots over to a drum of the wild. If I can get down in here. And yep, drum of the wild. What that does is every time it um, gets hit with a redstone pulse, it breaks all the flowers around it that aren't flowers that I crafted meaning this, the Jaded Amaranthus, which creates these mystical flowers around it at the cost of mana. So that one mana spreader, mana pool in the middle feeds all four of those flowers to create constant dye flowers all the time. And then the drum breaks them, and the transfer nodes with the speed and world interaction upgrades pick them up and shuffle them into the interface, which goes into the system. Easy, squeezy. Everybody knows how to do that. Um, sound mufflers, because this is rather loud, the Jaded Amaranthus make a placing that so sound for every flower they place, so with three of these it's silent. Um, it's a little bit better. Down here we have snowball creation. Um, we have a glacial precip precipitator with, I have three uh, three speed augments in here to make it go incredibly fast. Um, and thusly I had to have 64 world interaction upgrades to keep up with it. Um, but that was just because I wanted to get it filled quickly. Now I did kind of overkill this by doing a energy cell here and then p2p in the power in from this p2p 
into this P2P handler network, into this crafting network, and then out to the device. But I figured anybody who's going to put this in a real base is going to have an external power system somewhere else and probably be handling their power transfer via P2P tunnels anyway. So hopefully this will make it a little bit easier to people for people to see how that would kind of happen. Um, I'm just unpackaging the RF over here with the transfer node and then into the relationship precipitator so we have power in there along with the water. We have a barrel up here. Barrel keeps the snowballs on hand with a storage bus. This storage bus is set again to a priority 10 and actually let me just figure that for snowballs. Um, again, this side we have a collagen, 64 and 64 all around just to make it quick, making tons and tons of matter balls which go right up into the barrel. And that barrel also has a storage bus for matter balls and priority 10 again. So that handles all of the creation of the basic materials. Um, over here, we have a garbage can actually with another storage bus on it. This storage bus is set for all the stuff that we're creating all the time with a priority of five. So that way, anything that doesn't fit on the drives or in the storage buses will get trashed and not try to clog up the network somewhere. I just wanted to have that as a backup. Um, over here, we have all of our auto crafting section. Um, so on either side of this first section, this is on the molecular assembler. I have it fully maxed out on speed. Um, we have two interfaces that cover all of the petals to make from the flowers. Then on the front and back, we have the powders from the petals and a mortar and pestle in a crafting uh, grid. Then over here, the next set is how to actually create the different paint balls on either side. And in the middle again, I'm maxed out. And then we have a 64K um, crafting processor with coprocessor and store crafting monitor, just so we can see kind of what's going on. Okay, so that handles all of the creation. To keep it stocked, we have the typical interface and storage bus combo. We have the interfaces set to keep 64 of every color, 64 of every color, crafting cards again inside and storage bus is pre-configured for every color. So that way we keep, oh, this one doesn't notice. There we go. So that handles all of keeping this whole system stocked with paint, snow, and everything it needs to fill up a color applicator at all times. Like I said, all you really need is power generation over here to handle that. Now comes to the fun of filling this thing reliably every time. So, Unfortunately, as Soren saw on the stream, Steve's factory manager can't read the inventory of an ME chest. From what I can tell, nothing can aside from applied energistics level emitters. So to do this, we have to have a combination of two different systems. If you notice, there's another controller snuck in here. That's a subnet, which you can see from the glass fiber cable, quartz fiber right there. So the idea is this whole system on this side is a subnet and it's fed by this system. So we have this chest and a controller and all and the four interfaces, well, five interfaces. There's four interfaces that cover all the colors and then one on the bottom for the snowballs. And the interfaces and all the level emitters are on the subnet with the ME chest. So that way they can light up or turn off based on the qual quantity of items in your color applicator that you place in here. All the export buses, however, are on this network via this P2P handler network, which will make it so that way you can export all the colors from this network onto that network. We use interfaces for the import. I originally had it with chests and import buses into this network, but it wasn't fast enough. So we have it with interfaces so it goes directly into that network. And then we have a toggle bus over here that shuts down this whole system, meaning it not only shuts down the interfaces here, but it also shuts down the export buses into the interfaces so you won't wind up with a backfill of paint in the uh, interfaces not being able to be exported into the subnetwork via this one little toggle bus. And that's just a con, you know, a conduit from Ender IO that goes up and over redstone conduit over to this block to a lever. And then this terminal is so you can see inside the ME chest without having to you know, make sure you click the top, it's just for convenience. So the way that this works 
is you come over here with the color applicator, which is completely empty, as you can see. It's got 512 bytes of storage, so it doesn't have very much. You come up here, pop it in the front. Flick the lever, and take a look. So the system's gonna turn on, everything's gonna sync up, stuff's gonna start flowing in, and as everything fills up, oh, we got 160 of everything. And now I have it set for 128 of everything, but because of the speed of the export buses, I have two acceleration cards in every export bus. I found that that gives you the best happy medium of speed and reliability with numbers. If you use three acceleration cards, you're gonna wind up with too many of each color and it's gonna overload your color applicator. If you do it with one acceleration card, it's painfully slow. So two gives you 160 of every color every time. And when you look at your applicator, you notice where you're using 576 of five, 476 of 512 byte views, which is pretty much a perfect amount. So now what you do is you shut off the power here, wait till stuff starts to turn off. You could, I, I believe you can pull it out right now. So let's just pull it right out. And it shouldn't start exporting anything into these interfaces again, because these export buses are on this subnetwork, which is handled by this toggle bus. And there's no controller on this subnetwork. So there's nowhere for power to be stored. This network with the ME uh, chest has a controller behind it, which actually has an energy buffer in it. So when you shut the power off to this subnet, the ME chest subnet actually stays on for a couple seconds, but the export bus subnet turns off right away. So you can pull the color applicator out and not worry about overfilling the interfaces because they won't have power to export. Now, say you wanted to recycle this, you could come over to your IO port, throw this in here. Oh, look at that fancy rainbow cycle. And then there you go. And you're right back to a full system. You can come over here, pop it right in front again. Ta-da. Flick the lever. Take a look. Give it a sec. It's going to quickly fill up. Blah, 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 blah. Bing, bang, boom. Oh, look at that. So convenient. Turn it off. Yank it out. And we're set. And now if you come over here, you can see that the network still has enough of every color to have someone else come along. I mean, it would have to craft what it needed. Um, but yeah, that's uh, the automated color applicator. Um, it is quite a monstrosity, unfortunately. I tried thinking of ways to condense it. The only way you might be able to is this section. There might be a more efficient way to cable it, but uh, it took a while to even get this far. It's not really tessellated, but it's, you can see how it's kind of at an angle. Um, Originally, I had this all one color cable, um, like a fluid cable, all with anchors to separate it all, and it was just a nightmare to try to trace out the different cables, so I color cabled it um, via Soren, um, and it makes it a lot easier to kind of track down. Again, pink is power, um, orange is P2P handling, blue is kind of crafting, orange is auto, I mean, brown is auto crafting. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I plan on creating this once I get to the required tech level on all the different mods on, on Soren's subserver for anybody that feels like having automated paint refilling and also on Pahamar's um, patron server where I play. Um, I play on Patron quite a lot with Fireball and all the other people on there. It's quite a lot of fun. Um, anybody who's watching this should consider um, you know, supporting your favorite mod devs. It's uh, great fun. And uh, I hope everybody enjoys this. Um, if people would like, I can create a schematic for this as well, because um, I always use the Schematica mod, um, which is pretty handy. Um, it lets you create schematics of things. So you, I could actually create a schematic of this whole thing and post a link for it anywhere. Uh, I might do that by the time this is up. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to post in the comments, send me a message. Um, Hopefully I explained it well enough and the video is clear. Uh, yeah, hopefully everybody has a great day. Thanks very much. Enjoy.